Hello, Lorelinks. It's been a while. Many things have happened since we last talked, including I have finished grad school. I have moved. As you can see, my background is different. We are no longer in fun Dead Venture Time wall. We now have fun Dead Adventure Time corner. So we're gonna work with that storytelling corner. Actually, I'm here today to tell you the story that you all have been waiting for. Some of you have heard, but this is my origin story. <laughs> It started back in 2017. So it's freshman year, spring break, a missions group that I had been working with throughout the year was going on a mission trip down to Savannah, and then we had some free time, and so a bunch of people go downtown Savannah. Now, I had been to Savannah quite a few times before. Uh, I was in Girl Scouts growing up. Uh, Juliet Gordon Lowe, who's the founder of Girl Scouts, lived in Savannah, so her house is down there. So it was very popular for Girl Scout troops to take trips down to Savannah just for fun. Some of my dad's friends from college are from Savannah, so we would go down and stay with them and go see the city and go to the beach. It's a beautiful town. Uh, people fight between whether Savannah or Charleston is the better city because they're very similar. It's Savannah. Savannah's the better city. And their graveyards are open compared to Charleston's graveyards, which are rarely open. <sighs> That's a story for another time. I remember from when I was a kid, we used to go into this, in my mind, it was a park that had these huge old oak trees that would droop their branches down just to hitting the ground and then swoop back up. And so as a kid, these were perfect branches to go and climb up. So I tell my friends about this and they think that it's a great idea that we should go and see these oak trees. So I kind of look up and try to remember where it is. I just remembered it was about you know one block inward from the river. I walk in and <laughs> it is not a park it is a cemetery a lot of these graves in oh, it's called colonial park cemetery are kind of small really old really weather beaten and then walking through the cemetery i see a giant monument it was very new compared to everything else around it it was huge it rose i want to say 10 feet in the air I didn't measure it though. Don't I and I don't trust my visual measurement. So let's say it's an it's an Emma ten feet in the air. And so I I just feel drawn to it and I walk over to it uh, and I see there's an inscription there that says this is where we think that Button Gwinnett has been buried and Button Gwinnett. Uh, as lots of you know, was a signer of the Declaration of Independence from Georgia. I've always been fascinated by mysteries. I've always been fascinated by puzzles. So the fact that they say, we think this is where the remains of Button Gwinnett are buried, that triggered a bunch of things in my brain that got it excited and wanted to go home and learn more. So I go to take a picture of the cenotaph to get the information so that I can have it on my phone to go and research later. One of my friends sees me doing this and he says, oh, I'll take a picture of you. Uh, just so that you can have it. Earlier in the day, I had been going around the city of Savannah and taking pictures of statues. So for those of you who don't know about Savannah, Savannah is laid out in a grid system and each of these grids has a park in the middle. Some of the parks, well, every single one of the parks has either a statue or a fountain in it. And then some of those statues actually mark the resting place of the people that they depict, which you wouldn't really know that you were at somebody's grave. You would just think you were at a statue unless you read the inscription a little bit closer. So I inadvertently had been taking pictures with graves that day. So when my friend came and offered to take a picture of me with Button Gwinnett's uh, grave marker, I agreed. And we take this picture, which has since become iconic with my blog, uh, of me over Button Gwinnett's grave. And part of the reasons why it became iconic early on is because a lot of people in my family and friend group especially were a little bit concerned that I was so happy, seemingly, over a grave. Uh, usually we have uh, sadness associated with graves. And so they were like, Emma, isn't it a little bit disrespectful that you are smiling and making a heart over this person's grave? And a little bit about me as a person is when somebody contradicts or fights against me, I feel like I have to double down and fight back even harder, even if that's not actually how I feel. So the fact that I was being fought against for my picture over Button Gwinnett's grave made me defend it even harder, made me defend the act of grave picture taking, and by proxy, led me down this whole train of grave hunting. I had willingly told everybody that night everything that I had learned about Button Gwinnett. People saw how excited I was. And one of my friends came up to me and said, 
Emma, you know what you should do? Is you should go and see the graves of all of the signers. That would be cool. And I thought to myself, someone has probably already done that. Well, if people have done it, it was not on the internet. So in my mind, I am going to be the first person to go and do this, see all the graves of the Declaration of Independence signers and write about it. Please nobody do it before me. So I knew that there were graves out there. I knew that they were cool. I knew I liked to see them. I knew I liked to take pictures in front of them. Flash forward to that summer. I'm driving up to Canada, fun vacation with my family. Georgia to Canada is a minimum, you know, about a 20 hour drive. And here's the miracle. As I was packed in a car with five of my family members, we had been driving at this point for maybe 11 or 12 hours. I'm sitting in the back reading a book. The book that I happen to be reading is the James Garfield biography by Candace Millard called Destiny of the Republic. If you haven't read it, I definitely recommend reading it. James Garfield, after he was assassinated, was buried just outside of Cleveland, which we happen to be driving through. So I put down my book and I look up and I say, family, do you guys want to make a stop? And they're like, oh, Emma, you got to go to the bathroom. You're hungry or something like that. No, I would like to stop by a graveyard, if that's okay. And my dad looks back and he goes, Emma, that's weird. And my older brother looks back and he goes, Emma, that's weird. And I think that the unspoken vibe in the car at that time was, Emma, that's weird. But somehow with my silver tongue, I convinced my family that a good stretch break would be to take a like 30 minute detour off the highway, go to Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland and see James Garfield's grave. Kids, you can do anything that you put your mind to. Now, little did I know it at the time, but James Garfield's tomb is a four-story tall mausoleum filled with marble, gold, stained glass. Ah, oh, they went out. They went full out. So I brought my family here thinking that it was just going to be a rock in the ground. And we got what was basically a presidential death mansion. After seeing James Garfield's grave, I thought that because the presidency was such a high position and James Garfield was so unknown to the people today, that every president grave was going to be either James Garfield tier or better. And a kind of a plot twist is that James Garfield, while being a lesser known president, has the greatest grave out of anybody uh, in the presidency. And you can comment below and tell me if you disagree. But I'm leaving you guys here with a slideshow of the first 10 presidents I've seen. That's right, I've seen a whole 10. So you can gauge for yourself which one is the greatest. As always, thanks for watching. Special thanks to my old friends, Stephen and Laura Ann, for being there since the beginning. Keep following along with my adventures, and I will see you all next time.